The mechanical clock was invented by a Buddhist monk and mathematician Yixing in 725 CE. The clock was more accurate than other timekeeping devices such as sundials and hourglasses. The first clock was made of a wheel that turned by dripping water. The wheel turned once every 24 hours. Every quarter of an hour, drums would beat, and every hour, bells would ring. This let people know what time it was. The Chinese improved the mechanical clock during the Song Dynasty in 1092. This clock was more complex and accurate. Our clocks today are based on the same principles of early Chinese clocks. They use hands and dials instead. Segmental arch bridges. During the imperial era, engineer Li Chun built the first semicircular arch bridge in China between 606 and 616 in the Song Dynasty. Segmental arch bridges used less material and were physically more powerful and stronger than the ones before. Chinese engineers built bridges able to withstand a large amount of weight, such as people and their cargo. One of the greatest bridges was the Marco Polo Bridge, which is, one, which is 771 feet long and has 11 segmental arches and is still used today. Segmental arch bridges are used today in most bridges. They have progressed to using rods in lieu of segments. Thanks to the Chinese, we have this wonderful invention. This is movable type printing by Tyler, Danielle, and Bram. Pei Shang was an ancient scientist who invented the movable type printing. It was invented, invented during the Song Dynasty in the 11th century. The purpose was for them not to need to create a new block for each thing they printed. They were made by carving a character into clay and baking them. It lowered the cost of printing. More people could use movable type printing because it, the clay pieces were simple to produce. To print, they selected the characters they needed and placed them in an iron frame in the order they would appear on the page. Movable type printing is still used today with coins. A printer is a more advanced version used today. Today, we are talking about Chinese vaccines. It was founded by Taoist alchemists living as hermits in caves. They're invented by trial and error in a time of chaos. It was started in the 10th century during the Five Dynasties under the rule of Wang Tan. It was brought to the public attention after the eldest son of the Prime Minister, Wang Tan, died of smallpox. It was invented mainly to prevent smallpox as smallpox was a deadly disease. They used powdered scabs of inoculated people and inhaled them through the nose. What about the use of vaccines today, Mary-Kate? Vaccines used today are to prevent allergies and diseases. Today we are talking about the Chinese invention, paper money. In medieval China, paper money was made from the bast from in between the wood and bark of the mulberry tree. This version of paper was first shown to the Emperor of China by Kai Lun in the 2nd century CE. Paper money was first used because of the boom of commerce. In the 11th century, as buying and selling went on, the need for currency increased and so did the government's minting of copper coins. Then there was a copper shortage. Because of the shortage, moneylenders began issuing paper money at deposit shops. Unlike coins, it had no value in itself and could be easily counterfeited. But it was useful in trading and was easier to carry around. These paper money were made from the mulberry trees that are flattened into sheets and then cut into rectangular pieces, sealed with the seal of the Great Khan in the Yan Dynasty, as Marco Polo observed. Today, people all around the world use money and currency to buy and to sell. In many countries, paper money is used for multiple selling and trading and buying purposes. Porcelain, also known as china, is a type of pottery made by clay, rock quartz, and feldspar. Porcelain is made from heating the clay in a kiln at 980 degrees Celsius. It was invented in the Tang Dynasty, and the inventor is unknown. It was a very decorative pottery. Glaze was put on for colors. Porcelain was used for decoration and holding various goods. Hundreds of thousands of people wanted to mass produce dishes, bowls, and vases today. Is porcelain still used today? Porcelain is still used today for decorations around the house. It, it's also used for dishes and other things people eat off of.
Woodblock printing was a major Chinese invention. It is a technique for printing text, images, and patterns on textiles and paper. Woodblock printing was invented in about the 7th century by someone unknown. Woodblock printing was a process that required multiple steps. First, the printer would draw characters slash pictures on paper. He then glued the paper to a wooden block and covered the wood around the characters. He then covered the raised wood block with ink. Next, he would spread paper over the block and smooth it with the brush. The ink on the raised wood would then remain on the paper. By the 8th century, woodblock printing became an entire industry in China. Woodblock printing led to many other inventions, which eventually led to present-day printing. Gunpowder and flamethrowers were an important part to Imperial China during war. Gunpowder was invented during the Song Dynasty. The original idea came from the Byzantine Empire. It was made from potassium, potassium nitrate, sulfur, and charcoal. Taoists were experimenting to find some answers to immortality when they accidentally discovered gunpowder. Gunpowder was especially helpful during war. The Chinese were also the first to use rockets and flamethrowers. Rockets spread throughout Asia because they had held rocket festivals. They were often used in naval battles to take down ships. Rockets were also used to take down and burn large cities, especially during war times. Gunpowder, flamethrowers, and rockets were very important when China was at war in Imperial China. By Jonah, Sam, and Alyssa. This is Magnetic Compass by Liz, Alex, Dan, and Aaron. The Chinese invented the, magnetis com the magnetic compass, an invention we still use today. Its uses are generally the same from back then as it is today. We use it to find directions like north, south, east, and west. An unknown Chinese person discovered magnetite was magnetic, and that discovery led to the invention of the magnetic compass. Magnetic was common in, in lodestone, so they realized that if they rubbed lodestone to iron, it would become magnetic. Then they tried rubbing it on steel, and it ended up staying magnetic longer than iron. <gasps> the temperature where, where steel loses its induced magnetism is called the carry point. <laughs> when steel is aligned in a north-south direction, when it is cooling down, it becomes permanently magnetic because it locks into the Earth's magnetic field. Thanks for watching. This is by Alex, Liz, Dan, and Aaron. Today we will be talking about the Chinese paddle wheel boat. It was invented during the Northern and Southern dynasties from 420 to 581. Paddle boats or ships were first used by Admiral Wang Chen O in the 5th century. Though it arose during the Song Dynasty from 960, 960 to 1279. The average length for the paddle wheel is about 300 feet. The boat consists of a complicated system of paddles. The paddles and boards are affixed around the circumference of the boat. The ancient Chinese vessels look nothing like the American river boats. The paddle wheels allow the Chinese to maneuver better uh, and easier than a sailboat. The paddle wheel also had to be powered by people with their hands and feet. This type of boat had some difficulties. This limited the boat speed and obviously people can get tired. Paddle wheels were not seen on western ships for almost 1400 years. China was far ahead for the time period. Today, paddle wheel boats are used for small cruises and tourists often and tourists often use them to see sights along the water. These paddle boats that are used today are run by engines, not the original models, but a much more advanced version made with assorted metals. The Chinese used original models and modified them into a very successful warship. These warships were successful because they traveled at a constant speed and didn't have to rely on the wind. They could get in and out of the battle faster than any other type of ship. Paddle wheel boats were very useful in ancient China and are still useful today. Throughout history, different cultures have adapted the paddle wheel boat and the Chinese started it off. Canal locks. 
Canal locks were first created in 984 by Kiao Weiyao. The idea and notion of the canal lock was from the constant transportation of goods and grains. The different levels of water and land caused many issues because the wood dragged the boat, delaying travel and damaging the boat. When the actual canal lock was created, it had two gates and a giant roof, much like a hut. The vessel would pass through the first gate and the second would close. The water level would rise or decline to match the water level ahead. Locks were also built in series with multiple locks. The invention of the canal helped save many valuable resources. One of the most known places for canal locks is the Panama Canal. Canal locks are a very important invention that we still use today. Today we use many things to keep us from getting infectious disease. The ancient Chinese had developed a way of fighting infectious diseases shockingly before the first century. The first way that the Chinese prevented infectious diseases was by burning a chemical that gave off a poisonous smoke when someone had got infected by the disease. A type of disinfectant was the poisonous smoke that we used by the, that was used by the Chinese. Today we use many disinfectants to prevent the spread of disease through hand sanitizers, vaccines, and many more things. The thought of steaming the patient's clothes came into play during the Song Dynasty by Monk. Today, in order to kill disease causing germs, we boil medical instruments. To inoculate someone is to transmit a disease causing agent into them to simulate the body's defense mechanisms in order to protect them against the disease again. Inoculating people was discovered around the 10th century. The Chinese use inoculation to stimulate the immune system. They used many diseases. They used it on many diseases like smallpox. In order to be as safe as possible while treating a patient, the Chinese took the infectious material from the people who already got inoculated. With all of, the, all of the medical knowledge that the Chinese had about smallpox inoculating later, the drugs known as vaccines were developed. Today, vaccines are still used for many diseases, such as the smallpox, the flu, and many others. If it wasn't for the Chinese invention of inoculation, steaming objects, and chemical inhaling, we would, not, we would have the chaos around the world and many infectious diseases would spread quickly. Steel. Steel was invented by an unknown person during the Chow Dynasty around 200 BCE. Originally, steel was made out of iron and was bendable and less brittle, but it wasn't very strong. In the 5th century, they mixed cast iron and wrought iron into create softer steel and when under high heat melted into steel. These discoveries made it easier to produce larger amounts of steel inexpensively. In the, 18th, in the 1800s, the mass production of steel was very important to Europe's industrial revolution. Carbon was a major factor in making steel. If there was too much, it would produce cast iron, and if there was too little, it would produce wrought iron. So about 1% carbon must be put in to create steel. Steel was used for just about everything because it was very easy to move into the shape you want. Many innovations for warfare were also invented by the Chinese in medieval times. Most importantly, the rocket. That's really cool. Who invented it? It's not really known, but it was probably developed during the Song Dynasty. They got their propulsion power from gunpowder. Don't forget catapults. They were also very important. What did they shoot? Some fired rocks, like Europeans, but they also flung explosive shells. After the Mongols invaded, it was modified to look like a trebuchet. Really? Who came up with that? The first trebuchets were used by the Moists in China. Wow, the Chinese really made some great inventions.